Much of the western United States is filled with basin and range geography. On its eastern edge lies a great lake, the Great Salt Lake. Saltier than the sea, the waters are home to no animals besides the brine shrimp and the brine flies. However, this is enough to feed great flocks of migrating birds, making the entire area an important stop on the western flyway. I have a few personal favorite sites to check out. Out in the Great Salt Lake is Antelope Island. This island is a wild place with herds of wild bison and pronghorn. To reach it, you must drive a causeway through the lake, which is a very great place at spotting migratory water and shorebirds. Inland, where you may come across buffalo, I have learned a few spots to find burrowing owls. There are two nests below the visitor center. Look for a dirt pullout on the road and another further down the road past Bridger Beach on the road that leads either to the Buffalo Corrals or back to the main road. Just look for a parking area lined with rocks. Going down the main road you head to Gar Ranch, which has the only really big trees on the islands, so it is the best place to look for migrating forest birds. I have seen several rarer birds here, including a varied thrush and a water thrush, along with more common varieties of warblers and flycatchers. Antelope Island is a must for birding around the Great Salt Lake, and you get a look at some North American megafauna as well. Another site I think is worth going to is Farmington Bay. It is home to great flocks of migrants that stop in the freshwater bay to feed. In winter it usually attracts swans and eagles, but with a very mild winter a pelican flock was there in January. Gulls are quite common, like these ring-billed and Californian gulls scavenging on dead carp. There is also always a variety of water birds about, such as coots, ducks, and grebes. As you get closer to Salt Lake City, a place that holds a great diversity of waterfowl is Lee Cay Ponds. Situated right next to the dump, it is also one of the best sites around to get gulls. With that, those are my favorite spots to look for birds around the Great Salt Lake. But while in Salt Lake City, the best inner city spot to check for a lot of birds is Liberty Park. Home to some waterfowl, including a few migrants at the right time of year, shorebirds, and a lot of different songbirds depending on the season, it is a good place to check out. In winter, flocks of birds like brown creepers, nuthatches, and yellow rump warblers are common. Even a vagrant northern parula was here. While here, you can check out the Tracy Aviary, one of the two AZA accredited institutions that focuses entirely on birds. They have birds from all over the world, from those you may have seen on the lake to birds from South America, Pacific Islands, or African jungles. It is a nice stop for bird lovers. Finally, while in the area, you need to check out the mountains. I released a video on ski birding. It is really good for getting some specialty birds like mountain chickadees or rosy finches. In the summer, these alpine areas can yield red crossbills and various flycatchers, four hummingbird species, and even birds like the Williamson sapsucker. My two favorite sites are either up uh, Little Cottonwood in Alta or Big Cottonwood up by a place called Silver Lake. At night, different birds come out in the mountains. These canyons are home to owls, western screech, sawwet, and if you are lucky, the flammulated owl. You may also hear a common poor will. The best canyon for this nocturnal birding is Emigration Canyon. If you are here in the early spring, then you must come see one of the real birding highlights of the region, the Hennifer Sage Grouse Lek. Each year in the early spring, the sagebrush grasslands of the western United States play host to the bizarre mating ritual of the sage grouse. 
These greater sage grouse are one of the two species, this one being widespread and although declining still relatively numerous. The second species found to the south, the gunnison sage grouse, is endangered and much harder to see. They are lecking birds, which means the males all come together to put on a big show that the females are drawn to. It is a breeding strategy many other species use, including many other game birds, but also the neon orange cockatoo rocks, several bird of paradise species, and the flightless cockatoo parrot of New Zealand. A major component of the lecking display for the sage grouse involves inflating their throat pouch and using that to make their strange calls. The lek can easily be disturbed. See what happens when a hawk flies nearby. They quickly melt into the grass. When viewing a lek, it is important not to impede the behavior or disturb the birds. This is how they breed, after all. They are disturbed by people walking around outside their vehicles, any loud noises such as car horns, engines starting up. Also, don't play recordings. The lek is a pretty defined territory, and they're not going to get any closer, so it is completely unnecessary. It could also theoretically draw females away from the actual lek, so is therefore really detrimental to the breeding of these birds. I hope you all have a chance to enjoy a lek like this, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please subscribe and maybe check out another one of my videos. Thank you for watching.